Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, let's make a reverse dyed geode on a long sleeve shirt. The shirt has been washed, but I didn't soak it in anything, so it's just damp from plain water. I also have it turned inside out. I'm using a George brand shirt, which I purchased from Walmart in the men's section. It's a 100% cotton shirt, and it's kind of like a, maybe a dark burgundy color. I'm going to make a single geode on this shirt. So I'm going to grab an area up at the shoulder of the shirt and lift the shirt up off of the table and give it a good shake so that it kind of falls naturally. Then I'm going to begin tying sinew lines up on the shoulder of the shirt. I'm going to vary the distance between the lines and make it as random as possible. I'm also going to periodically lift the shirt up off of the table and give it a good shake. I want it to continue to fall naturally and not become too uniform or perfect. As I'm getting close to the end of this fold, you can see that one of the sleeves is hanging quite a bit beyond the rest of the shirt. To make it a little bit easier to tie, when I get a little closer, I'm going to go ahead and just fold that up into the rest of the shirt and tie it along with the rest of the shirt. Okay, so for the color removal process, I'm using a product called Out White Bright Laundry Whitener. I usually find it at Walmart in the laundry aisle, but if you can't find any, I have a link down below where you can purchase it from Amazon. So what I've done is I've placed the shirt, which is the one over on the left, inside of a plastic container, and I've sprinkled dry Out White Bright over the top and poured boiling hot water on top of that. I normally do this process outside because it gives off fumes. However, it was already dark outside and since I wanted to record it, I had to do this inside the garage over my utility sink. I am wearing my respirator though for the entire process. I went ahead and sprinkled just a little bit more out white bright to speed up the process. After I left the shirt for about five or six minutes, I went ahead and rinsed it and then put it in my washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent and washed it using a hot water cycle. I left it tied for the entire process and then I took it out and added it to my soda ash solution and I allowed it to soak in soda ash. I always use a separate soda ash container for any shirts that have either been reverse dyed or previously dyed. It's not uncommon for a little bit of dye or color to come out of the shirt into the soda ash solution, and I don't like to contaminate my main soda ash container. Then I wrung the shirt out in my panda spin dryer and set it aside to allow it to dry out completely before I began applying dye. I'm gonna ice dye this shirt in the muck. So I've taken a container and placed the shirt down inside of the bottom of the container.
I'm also going to add the dye over the top of the ice, so I'm starting by applying the ice to the top of the shirt. I want to add plenty of ice so that I have plenty of muck for the shirt to sit in. All muck is, is it is the melting ice and dye that is mixed together. You'll hear that term quite a bit with ice dyeing. I'm going to apply the dye a little bit differently than I normally do. Normally I apply the dye in either stripes or some kind of a uniform pattern, but this time I decided to be pretty random with the dye. I'm going to apply it just in small areas on top of the ice. I'm using a variety of blue and purple shades of dye. I'm using Royal Purple from Dye Spin, Brilliant Blue from Dharma, True Violet from Grateful Dyes, Royal Blue from Dharma, True Purple from Grateful Dyes, Evensong from Dye Spin, and Lilac from Dharma. I've also listed the colors that I use down below in the description for this video. Once I've applied all the dye, I'm going to add a very small sprinkle of soda ash over the top, and then I'm going to put this entire container in a little bit larger container, just in case it happens to leak. I'm going to set the container aside and allow it to process for at least 24 hours after all the ice melts. Okay, so this is what the shirt looks like before I started rinsing, and as you can see, it was pretty much all the way underneath the muck. So to rinse the shirt, I'm going to start rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash that's remaining in the shirt. Then I'm going to untie the shirt and warm the water up to hot and continue rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Because the shirt is so dark, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of hot water to my utility sink, along with a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent, and just allow the shirt to soak. Once the water is almost clear, I'm going to put the shirt along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent into my washing machine and wash it using a hot water cycle. And then after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? So I really love this one. I think it turned out looking really pretty. So were any of you guys a little bit surprised after the reverse dye process that the shirt turned a yellow color? I always think it's fun to see what color the shirts end up when you reverse dye them. Most black shirts and navy blue shirts turn taupe, but this one turned a pretty good yellow color. So that's what the yellow color is that you see still left on the shirt. That's where obviously the dye didn't get into that area and dye it a different color. But I think it looks really good on this shirt. That was kind of a mistake, but it was a happy accident. And I'm glad that it happened because I think it breaks up some of the other colors that I added to the shirt. So that's something to remember too whenever you're reverse dyeing using Out White Bright or Bleach or any other color remover is whatever color the shirt ended up after it was reverse dyed, that is going to influence or affect the way the colors look on the shirt. So my purples are not quite as bright and purple as they would be if they were on a white shirt because they're dying over the top of this yellowish color. But I'm really happy with the way the colors look on this shirt. I'm not quite sure which one of the blues ended up with the kind of a blue-green split. And here again, I'm not entirely sure if that's a blue-green split or if that's just the way the blue looks over the top of that yellow. If it's maybe just kind of tinted it just enough that it looks a little blue-green. But I think it looks cool. I like that. I also really like the red lines or the dark burgundy lines that were left from the original colored shirt. I think using colored shirts to reverse dye geodes with makes the geode look very interesting because it's not just a white lined geode shirt. It has that different color in there that's a little bit unexpected. I also experimented with just adding the dye in random areas on top of the ice and I can't tell that it made a huge difference. The dye did like it normally does and traveled the sinew lines. So it really doesn't look that much different than it does whenever I add the dye in lines or other patterns on top of the ice. So overall, I just think it's a really interesting shirt and I really like it. 
And if you guys have enjoyed watching the video and the content of the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.